So, this is the first BMW motorcycle I bought. It's a 1975 R75-6, and it's the first one that I tried to do a rebuild on, and I was very in love with the R90S, so I basically created a replica using smoke silver paint and the S fairing. Now I put over 100,000 miles on the bike and then I gave it to my son and he's just about added another 100,000 miles to it and what he wants to do now because the cylinders are pretty worn is we're going to replace those using a Seibin Rock 1000cc kit so it'll have a little bit more punch. So according to the odometer this has about 211,000 miles on it so far, so it's probably time for a top-end refresh. So I got the 1000cc Sieben Rock kit from Euromoto Electrics, and the kit comes with new cylinders, lightweight pistons, wrist pins, and retaining clips, and also new rings, and then for the R75, 1975, base gaskets, and these are valve cover gaskets, new seals for the pushrod tubes, and head gaskets. And so the pushrod tubes are already installed into the cylinder, so it should be a fairly straightforward process. And my son, Brandon, is going to do all the work on this update. So to get started, Brandon pulled the carburetor and just wired it up onto the frame. Now the heads on this bike are dual plugged, so Brandon pulled the top plug and the bottom plug and labeled them, but on this head the bottom plug is actually a little bit shorter uh, screw thread. Now the next thing that had to be done was to remove the header pipe and the easiest way to do that was to remove the mufflers and then unscrew the threaded nut that secures the header pipe to the head and we could remove the whole header assembly as a unit then. So this is the uh, BMW header nut wrench that fits on the slots on the header nuts that hold the header into the head. Now that Brandon has the valve cover off, it's time to remove the rocker assemblies and I've labeled bags so the exhaust will be in this bag and the intake will be in this bag because we want to put them back in the right place. And of course the way to do that is remove the four, the two nuts on each rocker arm and then to get the head off there's an upper nut here and a bottom nut here. So Brandon will loosen all that uh, gently so that the pressure is taken off gently and then we can pull the whole head assembly. So Brandon's just loosening a little bit on all of the nuts on the rocker blocks in a crosswise pattern so the pressure is coming off gently and we don't have any opportunity to warp the head. Now he's pulling the exhaust rocker off and going to put that and the nuts in the exhaust rocker bag so we don't get them confused. Now the next thing to do is pull the push rods and then we label the top of the push rod with a tag that says TE which means top exhaust because we want to put the push rods back where they came from. Now that we've got all the head nuts off and ready to pull it and there we go. So the head's off. Now we make sure the pistons at top dead center before we pull the cylinder off so that we can get to the gudgeon pin or wrist pin as it's called to get the piston off the connecting rod. Now since the cylinder has seal holding it to the engine block, Brandon's going to use a rubber mallet and tap around the fins to try and break that seal so we can slide the cylinder off the piston. Okay. Now it's broken free. Now this is where we have to be careful because we don't want to let the connecting rod drop down onto the engine block case. 
So Brandon's going to pull this out a little ways and then we'll stuff some rags in the hole and wire up the connecting rod. Now that the piston skirt's just about to be exposed, Brandon's going to stuff some rags into the hole in the block to support the connecting rod. Now that he's got the rag in, he's also going to take a piece of garden wire and wrap it around the bottom of the uh, connecting rod and over the studs just to be careful so it doesn't drop down as he pulls the cylinder off. There we go. We have the cylinder off. Next up is removing the piston. Now the gudgeon pin or wrist pin is secured by some snap rings that fit in a groove in the body of the piston. So Brandon's going to use a screwdriver to help pry that out. Now the way to get the pin loose is to use this little notch and take a small blade screwdriver and you pry up that leg of the snap ring. So this is the little snap ring that holds the gudgeon or wrist pin in the piston. Now there's a second snap ring on the other side of the wrist pin, so Brandon's going to get that one out too. Now to remove the wrist pin, we're just gently tapping with a 10 mil socket to drive the pin out. Okay, we've got the piston removed, or wrist pin, so all that's off the engine block. Now you can see this difference in piston size. This is the 750 and the Seibin Rock 1000. Now the 750cc head fits on the cylinder base with no problem. Now there's a lot of carbon in the head, so Brandon's using a brass wire brush and a Dremel tool to clean that up and that will help reduce any pinging or pre-detonation. So Brandon got a lot of that carbon out of there, so that's going to be a good thing. Now there's gasket sealers still on the mating surface on the engine block. So Brandon's going to clean all that off before we uh, put the new base gasket on. One way to do it is use your fingernail so you don't scratch the aluminum. And it generally it'll come loose. And the other thing you can use is a little uh, four zero steel wool that will also take it off. So there's the clean sealing surface on the engine block for the cylinder and uh, we used a little bit of brake cleaner and a clean rag to make sure there's no oil or anything on the mating surface. So this is the ring set that comes with the Seibin Rock kit and it shows the number one ring is the oil control, the number two is the middle, and the number three is the top ring. So we'll install those on the piston and then we're going to align the uh, end gaps in a particular order. Now notice on the piston top there's an arrow and that arrow is pointing to the front of the engine and that ensures that you get the piston installed properly so the exhaust side and the intake side cutouts on the head of the piston are in the right place. Now the oil control ring has two pieces it's got a wire spring and the uh, ring surface that fits over that spring. So you can expand the wire spring and slide it over the piston and then you can carefully expand the ring and slide it down. Yeah, so this spring has a little guide wire on the inside and Brandon's got that positioned on the lowest groove on the piston. Now the rings have a little marking top, which means this is the face of the ring that should point upward. Now you can see here where the ends of the spring come together, and we want that to be 180 degrees away from the gap in the ring. Now Brandon very carefully expanded the ring and slid it all the way down to the third groove, or the bottom groove, and now he's setting it so it fits over that spring with the internal wire. There we go, the oil control ring is installed in the bottom groove. Now to install the middle ring is again just carefully expand it, making sure top is up 
and slide it down to the middle groove. So carefully expanding the ring and sliding it down. And then the top ring goes on and it too has a marking of top on one of the legs. Now this piston is going to go in the right side and we set up the ring gaps so they don't line up and I'm using Snowbum's recommendation. So the oil control ring is about at 1030, the second ring is about 130, and the top ring is at 730. Now Sybin Rock says 120 degrees apart, but what you don't want is a ring gap to line up with the wrist pin. So Snowbum's recommendation ensures that doesn't happen. So I like to use this uh, to compress the springs. It's a clamp and uh, we'll put it over and compress them. Now before we compress the rings, this arrow points to the front and it's pointing toward the exhaust side of the piston. We're going to install new snap ring into the exhaust side. So when we go to put in the new wrist pin, it just slides in, we'll bump up against that, and we only have to install one of the pins. So the way Brandon did that is he caught one edge of the ring, walked it around, and then pushed the final piece with a screwdriver, and it slipped in. Now before installing the uh, little band to compress the rings, Brandon went back and made sure the end gaps are at the right positions because they shift around a little when you're playing with the piston. Now what I like to do is just put a very, very light coating of oil on the inside of the bore. So what I do is put a couple of drops and rub my fingers together and then just smear it around the inside of the bore. Now at the bottom of the cylinder, there's a slight beveled edge and that really helps get the rings in. So I like to insert the piston from the bottom. So Brandon's just gently rocking the piston back and forth so the rings can slide into the bore without catching. So we just install the piston just enough to get the rings inside the sleeve, but to leave the wrist pin hole exposed because then we can just slide the cylinder with the piston onto the studs and then we can mount the gudgeon pin through the connecting rod. So that's a lot easier to install that way. Now the next step is to put sealant on this mating surface. And before we do that, we're going to use some brake cleaner and a clean rag and clean that surface thoroughly so there's no oil or even fingerprints on it. Now I like to use the 3 Bond 1207B sealant. Now Brandon's going to apply that to, in a very, very light coat to the base. And the way I do it is I put a little dab on a gloved finger and just gently smear it all the way around so it's a nice uniform coating. So Brandon's got a nice uniform uh, amount of sealant on it. And of course you always get a little bit up along the sleeve. And what we like to do is take some Q-tips and just brush that off. Now there's also sealant applied to the mating surface on the engine block and it's done the same way. Just a very light coat. So there's the light coat of sealant. Now the base gasket also gets a very light coat on both sides. So the push rod tube seals have a little ribbed end and that's what goes into the engine block. And you'll see it's a little fatter on one side than the other. There's also a vertical bar. So the vertical bar is on the bottom. So it slides on like that so the bar is facing you. And the other thing I like to do is put a little silicone grease, not silicone seal, on the inside because I want it to be able to slide on the tube and I put a drop of oil on the outside so these seals can move back and forth as the cylinders heat up and cool down and that ensures you get an oil tight seal. So I have the push rod tube seals installed. You can see I put a little bit of oil on the outside 
And like I said, I put a little bit of silicone grease on the inside so they're a slight easily on the pushrod tubes. So Brandon put sealant on the back side and then hung it on the studs and then he'll put some sealant on the front side and slide it down not all the way to the block but about here. Now if you look at the shape of the base gasket you'll see that it's a little longer on one side shorter on the other which matches the way the cylinder studs are laid out. So there's no front or back but there is an orientation to get it to fit correctly on the studs. Now to get the gasket on close enough to the block I removed the wire holding the connecting rod and slid it past and then I'll put the wire back on. Now these are the top stud holes which are oil passages so they get little o-rings that go in them before we slide the cylinder onto the uh, studs. Now to help keep the o-rings where I want them I put a tiny dab of silicone grease on them before I put them in and it'll tend to keep it stuck in the hole so they won't fall out when I slide the cylinder on. So we're ready to slide the cylinder onto the studs. So Brandon's going to slide the cylinder down until the piston is just about over the connecting rod and then remove the wire and slide it a little further and then let the rest of the connecting rod rest on the inside of the piston. So the next step is to go get the wrist pin and install it. Now one other thing Brandon did before we slid the uh, piston and the cylinder on is he lubricated the inside of the bushing on the connecting rod with some oil. Now before installing that wrist pin we want to verify that the arrow is pointing forward which it is so we didn't rotate the piston. So Brandon's lining up the holes in the connecting rod and the piston so we can insert the wrist pin all the way through. So you can see the wrist pin came all the way through and butted up against the other snap ring and all Brandon has to do now is install the other snap ring. Before we slide the cylinder home Brandon's going to put a drop of oil on the top and bottom skirt and smear it around. So we're ready to slide the cylinder all the way up against the engine block uh, and against the base gasket. Now Brandon's got it pretty close, he's just checking to make sure the push rod tube seals are mating in the holes and sometimes you have to rotate those 90 degrees to get them to slide over the frame rail. Now the head gasket has holes for the push rod tubes and if you put the gasket on correctly the hole in the gasket will line right up with the push rod tubes. If you turn it around uh, then the holes will cover part of the push rod tubes. Now Brandon's going to install the head with the exhaust port which has the threads on it pointing to the front. Now the next step is we're going to install the rocker arm assemblies and put the nuts on and tighten them up in stages to pull the cylinder tight against the engine block. So the next thing is to install the push rods and the label on this one makes it the exhaust and this is the top so Brandon will slide those in so they're in the right orientation and the right hole. Now it's important to get the little ball on the end of the push rod into the cup on the cam follower and the way to check that is to just gently pull out on the rod and you should feel some resistance which means it's in the cup. Now this is the intake rocker and we'll install that and then the exhaust rocker. Now we align the uh, tappet so that it's right on the ball end of the push rod and we make sure the top rocker block is at the top and that's the block with the split and the split should point to the outside. Now the nuts that secure the rocker blocks have a flat face and that's what's going to go up against the pillow block here. 
Now that the rocker arm assemblies are on, we're going to tighten up the nuts in a crosswise pattern until we pull the cylinder tight to the block. Now we'll torque the uh, heads up in three stages, 10 foot-pounds, 18 foot-pounds, and 25 foot-pounds. So we'll do the crosswise pattern and also the top and bottom nuts. So Brandon's going to set the valves so it's six thousandths on intake and eight thousandths on exhaust. So the right side is installed and uh, we'll go work on the left side next. So Brandon has the left cylinder and pistons and everything installed. So the next thing we're going to do, just to be sure that we didn't plug up any of the oil passages with the sealant, is we're going to crank the engine and watch these top pillow blocks. And there should be oil coming out of both sides. And if there is, that means that we didn't plug up the oil passages that come up the top cylinder stud holes. Now the other thing we wanted to do is make it easy to crank the engine. So we pulled the spark plugs, but we ground them in the head because we don't want to damage the coils or if you have an electronic ignition, you'll probably destroy it if they're not grounded. Now the oil probably will come out pretty quick, but uh, we only gonna run the starter motor a maximum of five seconds. If it doesn't come out, we'll let it rest and we'll try again. So here we go. Okay, so we have oil flow on the left side, and we have oil flow on the right side. So, everything's primed. So Brandon's ready to put the exhaust system back on. So we're going to start with putting the headers on. Before we put the nuts on, we're going to put some silver anti-seize to prevent that from galling and screwing up in over time. Now we just put the header nut on loose for now because we want to align the mufflers and get them mounted on the uh, header pipes and then we come back and we'll tighten these up. So Brandon's got the muffler installed so now we're going to use the exhaust nut wrench and tighten up the nuts. And we just give it a good grunt so it's nice and snug and it's good to go. Now before we do the first engine start, we're going to drain the oil and change out the oil filter and put fresh oil in the engine. So we're ready for a first engine start and what Brandon's going to do is get it going, probably have to use a little choke, and then we're going to take the RPM up to 3000 for about 15 seconds and then take it up to 3,500, rolling it up to 4, letting it roll back, and rolling it up for about 45 seconds. Now the reason to do that is it really helps the rings mate into the cylinder walls, and that uh, gives a good tight seal and will reduce oil consumption. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we get lucky. Take the choke off. Choke off. Oh. That's okay. 
Okay, so success. First engine start went fine. The next step is to probably ride for about 10 miles and again doing some RPM variation. Now on the 10 mile ride, Brandon's going to try to hold it at 3,000, roll it up to 4, let it come back, and every now and then roll it up to about 4,500 and let it come back to 3. And that again helps seat the rings into the cylinder bore.